Hey Discovery Church Online, thanks for tuning in this week. If you have any questions or just simply want to know more about who we are as a church, then find us online at ilovediscovery.church or you can download our app free from wherever you download apps from. Today, our senior pastor Jason Hanish will be talking about the battlefield of the mind and how to engage in this battle and come out victorious. Welcome again to Discovery Church, you guys. Welcome to our online audience as well, catching in online. We're in part two of our uh, series, new series here for the new year, the best year ever. I'm believing it for my life. How many believe in the best year ever? Amen. Amen. I know it's I know it's scary even saying that entering entering the year, especially with some of the things in 2017 that maybe didn't go the way that you wanted it to go, and I understand there's some trepidation coming into this year going, okay, okay, it's the best year, it's going to be the best year ever, but, but I, I do believe that it can be. I just think that maybe we're approaching the year um, wrong. I think that a lot of us approach the year with resolutions, with action items, um, trying to develop new habits, maybe new skills, maybe new routines, better routines, stuff like that. Those are all good, and God will even lead you to do some of those things. It's just for many of us, those new things that we try to develop are very short-lived because we didn't try to do it. We didn't work inside out. We tried to do it outside in. And so the Bible says, our theme verse for this, this series, Proverbs 23, 7, it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So before there was like psychology and sociology and all that stuff, God was the one who said that your thoughts determine your feelings, like your heart, and your feelings determine your actions, will determine your life. Like, as this was Bible before there ever was this entire field. And so we're just, I, I believe that if we were to focus a little bit more on the thoughts that are fueling our habits, if we were just to focus a little bit more on the thoughts that are fueling our beliefs and fueling our, our, our actions, that maybe, I believe, and the Word of God agrees with it, you'll see all throughout this series, that, that you could actually have long-lasting change if you just change the way you think. And so that's, I, I, I'm inviting you on this journey, this New Year's journey, to maybe stay off a little bit, hold off on, on, on trying to change your whole overhaul of your life with your resolutions and whole new brand new you and stuff with all these action items you have and goals and checklists and really to start here first write it down this way this is the key thought you guys for this series and that is you'll never change your life until you change the way you think so uh, i'm inviting us all discovery all on a journey of of transformed thinking how do, we, how, do we, how do we change the way we think? Because as I'm, the way that I think is going to manifest itself in my life. My thoughts have creative power. And so if you missed part one, go back and check it out. We just talked about why good thinking matters and how much it's actually influencing your life. And last week, we actually, I challenged the church. A lot of you, I know, kind of accepted that challenge of a media fast, kind of staying off the media. We're in 21 days of prayer and fast. I know God is leading you to different things, but... I really challenge, and a lot of you took it up and stayed off of social media and other parts of media. How many of you just feel so much better coming in Sunday? Come on, man. I'm t I just, I, I mean, I, I, I don't think I was on it that much, probably too much, to be honest, as, I'm, as, I'm, as now I just took it all. I, I'm like, man, I, I have margin in my mind now. You know what I'm saying? It's like every, not every moment of your life needs to be consumed by things. And, and, and I think that's, we're, we're not creating the margin and the space in our, in our mind, in our thoughts to produce the kind of lives we want to live, to produce the kind of lives that God desires us to live. And so I think moving into the rest of this year, I'm shift, I'm going to, I'm going to do social media differently. I'm just, I'm just going to do it because it has affected me so much just staying off of it. Um, our minds are an amazing creation by God. God just, it, it's it would take a computer the size of the Pentagon to, to carry out just the basic function of your mind. Do you know that? Just your mind is, is it, your brain contains 100 billion nerve cells. And each one of those nerve cells is connected to 10,000 other neurons. There's stuff firing all the time in your brain. Like right now, you are talking to yourself. Do you know that? Like right now, you're, you're talking. You're having a conversation. In your, in your mind, you're talking to yourself. Studies show that, that, that the average person can speak like 150, 200 words a minute, but 
the, the self-talk, the average, the average amount of, of thoughts we think towards ourselves, or the, the, the thoughts you can carry on and the conversation you carry on even within yourself, you do at a rate of 1,300 words per minute. It's just, it, there's so much more going on in your mind than, than, than you think. And, and, and actually what is going on in your mind is what is manifesting and shaping your life. And so, and so this year, we're just going to do it differently, you guys. We're, we need to change the way we think. Romans 12, 2, it's not in your notes, but God said that let's be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Like that's how God wants to change us into a brand new person, by renewing our mind. I want to study a verse before we jump into, and if you can catch me up on the screen back there, you guys, I don't know what time I'm at or anything, and it's just, it's, I know, I'm sorry, you guys, I just, that thing is going to, it's going to kill me. We'll be here all day if that timer does not, I will just keep talking. That's what's going to happen. So, yeah, I just, I will. I totally will. We don't want that because the next service will come and they won't have a parking spot and fights will riots and stuff like that. So anyway, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me study this with you in, uh, for, for a moment, you guys. 2 Corinthians 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we're not waging war according to the flesh. So let me kind of explain that, okay? It's not talking about walking in your carnal nature. He's just talking about like your natural body. You do have flesh. We all have flesh. We all have this body and we're walking around in it. So although we're walking around in this body, in this flesh, that's not how we fight. That's not how we wage war. The title of today's message is called The Battlefield of Your Mind. You see, there's, there, there's three, I think there's three things that we kind of, uh, the, the reason why some of us are, are losing battles today is one of three reasons, or maybe all of these reasons. Number one, these aren't in your notes, so I'm just going to, I'm going I'm to talk about one of them today, but there are three reasons why we're probably losing the battle. Number one, you're fighting the wrong enemy. You're, you're, your enemy's not flesh. Some of us are fighting in our flesh. We're fighting people. We're fighting their ideas. We're fighting their philosophies. We're fighting their opinions. We're fighting their decisions. We're fighting against people to get our way and not their way. And so we're fighting, and our battle is not against flesh. Some of us are losing battles. We're losing ground because we're fighting the wrong enemy or we're fighting with the wrong weapons. The wrong, that's not the, the, he goes on to say that we have divine power. That's what God has given us. He's given us divine power. But number three, we're, some of us, we're just fighting on the wrong battlefield. You know, look, I get it. Some of you are fighting hard. You're fighting hard to win. You're fighting hard for your marriage. I know you are. You're fighting hard for your sanity. You're fighting hard to combat depression or anxiety or fear. Some of you are, you're, you're fighting so hard and it's and, and i'm not saying you're not what i am saying is that today maybe you're fighting the wrong battlefield maybe maybe you're engaging on the uh, it, it, that that really the the battlefield is your thought life the battlefield is in our minds he says for the weapons of our warfare are not flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We'll talk about that in a moment. What's a stronghold, maybe even in your life? We destroy, he says, arguments and every lofty opinion, or basically what that means is every high thing, anything that exalts itself, raised against the knowledge of God. And look at this, and take every thought. How many of your thoughts? Every thought. No, no, not just the bad ones. Not just the ones are from the enemy. He says, take how many thoughts? Every thought. Every thought captive. And he says, you bring those thoughts to obey Christ. The primary window of warfare is your thoughts. That's the window. That's the battlefield that we need to start engaging on and guarding against and producing the right things in the area of our thought life. He says we destroy or demolish, one translation says, arguments. You know, so often God will tell us to do something, and then we, we, we have thoughts like why we shouldn't do it. Anyone ever, ever do that? Or why we can't do it, why we shouldn't do it, and why that's not going to work out. Those are arguments, and the Bible says we have power to destroy them. Those arguments, and those arguments, they often present themselves with facts. But listen, just because something's a fact doesn't make it true. Yeah, I know I'm hurting some of your logic right now. You're like, wait a second. No, no, we have a truth that's higher than facts. You see, because though Jesus, it was a fact that Jesus was dead. The truth was he rose from that grave and, grave and is alive forevermore. See, we need, we need something higher than facts. We need, to bring, it's, it's, we need to bring what's verifiably true and factual and submit it to the word of God. 
That's what's true. You see, in the day, what, is, what is true now does not have to be true then. It's something may be dead in your life now, but it ain't dead forever. There's a resurrection coming out of that thing in Jesus' name. Many thoughts, they're, they're dispatched by Satan to terrorize our faith. And, and he says that too often we, we, we just let these thoughts go or we try, to, we try to dismiss these thoughts or try just not to think about them. Think about something else. But that's not effective, you guys. That doesn't work. We're told in this scripture the key to maintaining a healthy thought life and engaging the right battlefield and fighting correctly. He says, we, don't just dismiss those thoughts. But what does he tell you to do? To take every thought captive. Like, like you got to grab hold of every thought in order to inca- interrogate them and destroy them. Like, what, where did this thought come from? Why was it sent? And then, you know what? If, if, if it was sent from Christ, amen. Bring it under the obedience. If that's a God thought, amen. Bring it, amen. But if it's not, you interrogate it, you're going to find out where it came from. And if you don't interrogate that thing to destroy that thought, it'll come back again. It'll come back again into your life. And it'll affect you again and try to hurt you again and destroy you. You've got to screen every thought that comes into your mind and find out where it came from. If it came from the enemy, you can interrogate it and find out the purpose of where and why it was sent for. Thoughts of the enemy, they can actually give us valuable information if we would just take them captive and question them. It's, it's almost like you, you, you caught, you, you, you're in, a, in, a, in war and you caught someone in the other camp you caught someone in the other camp and you and and you take them captive and you're going to interrogate the plans of that soldier what are the battle plans that are going on here what are you trying to do how are you trying to to come at me you interrogate them to find the purpose satan sends out thoughts in order to keep us from fulfilling our purpose so if you interrogate what is intimidating you it'll give you insight into your purpose Let me say that again. If you start interrogating what is intimidating you, it will give you insight into your purpose. You see, so if if, if, if the enemy is sending thoughts or telling you that you're nothing, you're unqualified, you are not equipped, you're not going to make a difference, and you take captive that, that thought and you start to interrogate that thing, where did you come from? And you start to bring it into the obedience of Christ, you will immediately see that God says, I am more than a conqueror. That God says that I have given, I've been given everything I need for life and for godliness. That I'm going to bring this under the obedience of Christ. So maybe you're getting thoughts about your marriage, that it's over, it's done, it's not going to last. You grab hold of that thing, you take it captive, you say, why were you sent? Well, God says that my marriage is to be a reflection of his glory on earth, that it's supposed to be a reflection of Jesus Christ in the church. And the enemy's purpose is to destroy that. So it shows me now God's purpose for my marriage is so that he, we would bring life through it. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? You, you got you to gotta learn how to take captive these thoughts and interrogate them so that you can destroy them. Take captive, take captive. Our enemy is not other people. It's not, it's not flesh. It's 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 the devil. It's 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 his dominion, it's his principalities, it's the weapons of the enemy are his only weapon is a lie. That's his weapon. It's it's a lie. Bombarding our minds with negative thoughts and suspicions and doubts and fears and worries and theories. And he knows our insecurities, so he knows how to come at us. He knows our weaknesses, our fears, and what bothers us. But since his weapon is a lie, the only thing to counteract a lie is the truth. The only thing to counteract a lie is a truth. We have to learn how to take our thoughts captive and to guard against the schemes of the enemy. Once you know the enemy is at the drawing board right now, the Bible says he's a schemer. He's a schemer. And he's at the drawing board right now to trip you up again this year, to make sure you don't change, to make sure that, that you don't conform to the image of Christ, to make sure that this is not the best year ever for Discovery Church, that this is not the best year ever for your life, your family, your kids. He's, he's scheming for that, and he's going to send out some thoughts your way. All right? And if you'll learn to take him captive, you're going to learn his battle plans. So what are, some, what are some things we need to guard against? I want to look at four areas of our thought life that we need to guard because the enemy is going to come at these four areas. I guarantee you, every one of us have these four, these four thoughts, these four arrows, the fiery arrows they're called of the enemy coming at us this year. We need to put up a guard and guard our lives against these four things. Write them down with me, you guys. Number one, we have to guard against the lies of the enemy. Guard our minds against lies. The actual word in 2 Corinthians for strongholds is, is the Greek word is a hurama, a hurama. 
There you go. That's the word. It literally means any lie of the devil that keeps you trapped. That's what it means. It has a strong hold on you. There's a lie we're believing, and just by believing it, it becomes true in our life. It may, it's not true, but because I believed in it, it's a, tr- it's a reality in my life, and I am held captive by that falsehood. What are the areas that the enemy likes to lie to us? Well, he likes to send lies about yourself to you, doesn't he? He'll, he'll, he we'll start to think things about ourselves that are not true. But just by believing in them, we'll live up to that level of expectation of ourselves, don't we? We say, man, I am, I'm nothing. I am not worthy, and I'm not called, and I'm, that's not for me, and I am. And, and, and he'll, he'll bring lies about yourself. Or what he likes to do, he really loves to bring lies about your relationships. Put thoughts in your mind about others, about their intentions, about their, their motivations, and, and, and you try to destroy relationships with a lie. Like your husband came home late from work, and he must be in an affair then. That's what it is. That's it right? So it's just things that are out of your control, just in, or maybe it's lies about God. He likes to do that too. He likes to, he likes to plant lies in your mind about, about God, like God is not for you. His plan is, is, is actually a, a plan of destruction. Like, like that's, that's a common lie the enemy will give. It's like, if you continue to obey, obey God, you're going to get hurt. Oh, it's going to bring, it's going to bring pain. It's going to bring destruction. And that is a lie that keeps people from walking in faith so much. The enemy will lie to you about God, the devil will try to get you to believe things that are not true. And imagine things, make believe things in your own mind. Proverbs 14 and 8, it says, The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways. And that's what I'm trying to give you this discipline, you guys, in this series, to actually just start thinking about your ways, to put in thought to your thoughts. Just stop living aimlessly and just focusing on outward actions, outward appearance, outward habits. Start thinking about your ways. Start thinking about your thoughts. The Bible says that is wisdom, but the folly of fools is buying into that deception. That's, that's, that's what makes, that's the folly of fools is deception. You've seen it. I'm sure you have. Where, where maybe on the outside looking in, you saw someone who was bound by a deception. Have you ever seen that? Where, where it is their reality. It is, they are totally convinced that something is true. You're on the outside looking in and go, oh my gosh, this is, that's, not, that's not what's happening. Maybe someone thought something about you that wasn't true. And they, they believed a lie. And you're on the outside looking in going, oh my, but to them it's reality. And it's affecting them and eating them up and straining a relationship. Man, you got to guard your mind against the lies of the enemy. Here's the second thing we got to guard against. Guard your mind against fear. Fear is paralyzing. It's a common tool of the enemy. It immobilizes us. It, it, it stops us in our track from obeying God, and from doing the faith-filled, risk-taking things that God desires you to do this year. The, the, it, I call it the battle of the what ifs, right? That like, what if this? And what if that's going to happen? What if she doesn't? What if? What if I don't? And what if God doesn't? And what if? And what if? Or, or fear will sometimes this this manifests itself as maybe perfectionism. Like if you're a perfectionist, so a lot of times what perfectionism is is just a manifestation of of a, of a heart that's afraid. And really, you're just afraid, or it's not the right timing. It's just not the right, not the right condition. And really, that is fear manifesting itself in our life, and we're afraid of things that can never happen or won't ever happen, and they're and they're out of our control. Why are you Why are you worrying about it anyway? Jeremiah six and twenty four talks about these, the crippling effect of fear. It says that we have heard reports about them, like the enemy, and he says this: our hands hang limp have you ever been like that afraid like in a situation where you just like, feel like the power just taken from you maybe you got a an, a bill notice or something like that and you just or or there's a situation that you you know you should handle it but you you like oh, you're just putting it off you're just you feel like powerless that's what he's talking about that's what fear does man i'm just oh anguish has gripped us pain like that of a woman in labor and every woman say you don't even know come on come on don't act like you know you don't know okay you don't know um, Abigail is, is my daughter, Abigail, she's my middle, middle daughter, um, she's really into Googling things right now and trying to get more information and really just like, like, uh, accumulating knowledge, she's a sponge, man, so, um, but her thing now is like, is Googling phobias and then quizzing us and just saying, hey, tr- trying to see if we can get it, and so it's, it's really fun, but, but, so some of them I get because I have a medical background and I know, I know some Latin words, I know some Greek words, so I'm like, some of them I can get, but some of them are like, 
they're just astounding to me. Like, these are phobias. These are real fears. Okay, let me give you a couple of them, just a couple that, that, that I found that were awesome. Um, nomophobia. Nomophobia. You guys know what that is? That's the fear of being without phone coverage. That's a real fear some people. You know, I can't, I can't go to that side of town, you know. <laughs> How about this one? Uh, pagonophobia. Pagonophobia. You, you probably won't like discovery that much, honestly, if this is one of your fears. You know what that is? The fear of beards. <laughs> That's a real deal, man. But what, what happened here? Look, fear and faith are both products of focus. They are. But when our focus is on the wrong things, fear is produced. We laugh at these things, but what it is is just someone is focused on the wrong things and it is producing fear in their life. But when we focus on the right things, faith is produced. See, an, see an unfocused and undisciplined mind welcomes fear and weakens your faith. If you're lacking in faith today, it's a sign of broken focus. That's what it is. It's, it's, if you're lacking in faith and maybe you're consumed by some type of fear, it's, it's, a, it's a sure sign that somewhere in there, your focus is broken. Our faith will rise when we concentrate on the goodness of God, when we concentrate on the greatness of God, when we concentrate on our faith will lie, rise that level of our focus. We need to guard our minds against fear. Here's the third thing. We need to guard our minds against temptation. Guard our minds against temptation. This is a daily battle, man. And we did some media fast, and uh, you're already seeing the benefit of that. But it's a daily battle to, to guard against the things that are coming in your mind. Guarding from TV and music and radio and books and, and mute, movies, internet. We need to fill our minds with truth, not poison. And nutritionists, nutritionists will tell you that there's three types of food. There's brain food, junk food, and toxic food. And the same is true for what you like take in through your ears and eyes. There's the same types of food that you will, you will take in. There's junk food. So junk food is just the stuff that is like, I mean, it's just empty calories. It tastes good, but it's just dead weight. It's just empty calories. You just, you're just not hungry for the good stuff anymore after eating junk food, right? That's what junk food does. It's not really bad. Like social media isn't really bad. I mean, those movies, it's not really that bad. But, but it, because you're so entertained all throughout life, you got no margin, no room to think the kind of thoughts that you should be thinking. It's just junk. But it's not good or bad. You just got way too much of it. It's junk. And then there's toxic food. How I many you know too much toxic food will kill you? Too much toxic thoughts will kill you. Um, we were going out to eat, and we are at this, um, it was just last week, and we went out to this burger joint, and they sell some other things. I forget what it's called. This one down here off of uh, Gosford. But, but my daughter ordered a big old bowl of, like, chili cheese fries. She loves chili cheese fries. But this bowl was massive, and I'm doing a little fast here. And I'm like, and I'm sitting down with them just because I wanted to go out, you know, to lunch with them. I'm drinking my water at <laughs> once. And, and, and man, those chili cheese fries were looking good, man. It was this big old bowl. I'm just staring at my daughter as she's eating them. She even said, she's like, Dad, why are you staring at me? I'm just like, I'm just living through you right now. It's just <laughs> continue eating, please. Give me the play-by-play. -play. But after, afterwards, as we're going to the car, she, she comes out. She's like, uh, Dad. I feel awful. And I was like, that's, that's redemption right there. Thank you, Jesus. I needed that. I needed to be reminded, Jesus. So I'm like, that's what you get. That's what you get. No, I'm kidding. I didn't tell her that. But, but that's what toxic food does. Toxic food, it does. I mean, it looks good. While you're consuming it, it tastes good. But it makes you feel terrible afterwards. And it will it'll kill you. We need to be feeding on, on truth, not poison. Satan, when Satan gives you thoughts... They're temptation, but when God gives you thoughts, they're inspiration, and it's for us to choose. You get to choose which ones you're going to feed on, and you fill your minds with the right things. Matthew chapter 26, 41, Jesus says, watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, like, man, in there, I want to do what's right, but my flesh is so weak, man. It just, Jesus, so some of us, look, some of us are good at praying, but we're terrible at watching, and he told us to do both. So this is, this is what I'm trying to discipline you to do. Not just to cry out to God. Yes, let's cry out. Let's offer up. But let's start giving watch to our ways. Let's start thinking about our ways and thinking about what we're thinking about. Jesus tells us to do both. Watch 
and pray. And I'm telling you, it's so much easier to overcome a sin at the thought level than it is at the action level. I mean, you can, you can take it captive and interrogate and destroy that thing but ever, before it ever became a bad habit. Okay, man, that's what I'm telling you. You can have the best year ever. You will change your life if you just start thinking about what you're thinking about. If you just change the way you think. Here's the last one I'll tell you. Guard your mind against. And that's guarding your mind against negativity. Guard your mind against negativity. Just a bad attitude, man. Just seeing the glass half empty, right? Just the, the man saying things like, I'll never do this. It just, and maybe it's, maybe it's the relationships that you're around that maybe feed you some of that negativity. Or maybe, maybe you're around people that are pessimistic and not optimistic. Maybe you're around people that are just like, uh, they're pulling you in the wrong direction. The devil will try to get you depressed. Don't give in to it. you got to guard your mind against the negativity that he wants. Psalm 42 and 5, David says, Why are you downcast, O my soul? And why, why, why are you so disturbed within me? And then he gives the answer. He says, Put your hope. Man, i got to refocus my mind and my heart. Put your hope in God. Last week we talked about that you can change the way you think. You can. Like good thinking matters, and you can change the way you think. Today, let me give you the right thoughts to think like like being intentional about the right kind of thoughts that you should be thinking another good verse proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 it says be careful how you think you, guys know, you know why you have to be careful how you think you guys because your thoughts are so jacked up okay and so are mine i'm just serious okay your thoughts every one of us please listen every single one of us are is living with a mental illness called sin we are. Every one of us, it is, there is a sin nature that has affected our minds, and just because you think it doesn't mean you need to act on it. Just because you're thinking it doesn't make it true. Just because you're thinking it doesn't even mean it's yours. Your thoughts, my thoughts, they're messed up. You, can't, you cannot trust what you're thinking. The Bible says, Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. And then 1 John actually says that we can lie to ourselves. He says, if, the, if we claim to be without sin, then the truth is not in us, and we deceive ourselves. You can't even trust your own thoughts. So we have to learn not only to take the enemy's thoughts captive, but to take every thought captive. Because you're lying to yourself sometimes. You're, 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 you're talking down to yourself and talking yourself out of it sometimes. Not just from the enemy, but from ourselves. We can't always control the thoughts we have, but we can control the thoughts we hold. All right, that was, that was one you need to, you need to you sit on and grab hold of that one. You can't. The only, we can't always control the thoughts we have, but we can control the thoughts we hold. Some thoughts come from God. Some of them come from the enemy. But we need to lo- learn how to hold the thoughts that are true, that are noble, that are righteous, that are pure, that are praiseworthy, that are excellent. All the things we talked about last week, we need to learn how to hold those thoughts. Don't believe everything you think. The thoughts you choose will affect your life. It's going to affect your body. It's going to affect your marriage. It's going to affect your jobs. It's going to affect your uh, friendships. It's going to affect your success. It will shape your life, the thoughts that you hold on to. Let me offer you five thoughts that, you, that can change your life, you guys. You can test your thoughts to make sure it lines up with the Word of God. As you, as you take it captive and you bring it under the obedience of Christ, you can test your thoughts to make sure it lines up with these five things right here. That it should light up with the word of God. Here's number one. Here's the choosing the right thoughts. Number one, think positive thoughts. Think positive thoughts. Some of us just need to retrain in this area. It just, years and years of of thinking negatively. And parents that think negatively and siblings that think negatively and being around it so much. Positive thoughts produce positive lives. Negative thoughts produce negative lives. Always think, we should, we should lean towards, yes, Lord, instead of, I don't know, God. Or just straight up like, I don't think so, God. I don't know which way you lean and where you're leaning today, but we need to get to a place where, we, where we're leaning already towards, yes, Lord. Send me, Lord. Your servant is listening, Lord. Like, like our, our inclination should be leaning towards positive and yes. If it's not, you need to change the way you think. There was, Jim Carrey did a movie a while ago called Yes Man. Anyone ever seen that? 
funny movie. I, mean, I don't encourage you to say yes to everything that comes your way, but you can change your life. You really can by just responding in the affirmative by saying it's the power of yes. But some people, they're afraid to hope. And some of you are. Some of you are afraid to hope. You've had so much disappointment, so much hurt, that it's hard for you to be positive on the outset. Your philosophy might be if you don't expect anything good to happen, then you won't be disappointed when it does, when it doesn't. That's, and that is a terrible philosophy to have. If you are, if, that's, if that, any of that is an inclination of your thought, you need to take it captive and bring it under the obedience of Christ. Practice being positive in every situation. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 tells me, when I bring it to the obedience of Christ, this is what Christ says, I can do what? Everything. Everything through him who gives me strength. See, when you're thinking positive, it, 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 it actually it will, it will produce and shape a positive life. Here's number two. Think encouraging thoughts. Think encouraging encouraging thoughts so not just positive but i need to i need to have discipline my mind to actually think encouraging thoughts when, when you have the mind of christ this is one of the ways that, know, that to know like if you're in the mind of christ or you're operating in the right spirit you have good thoughts about others all right let me say it this way when you know you're operating in the wrong spirit and the enemy has deceived you is you're having bad thoughts about other people when you're thinking, when you're judging them, when you're judging their intentions, their motivations, their actions, when you're, when you're you know, thinking mean or, 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 or even bef- tragedy befall this person, whatever it is, the flies of a thousand camels go after their armpits in Jesus' name. Praying stuff like that, you know you are in the wrong spirit. You're in the wrong mindset there. When you have the mind of Christ, you will think good thoughts about others. Ephesians 4.19 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. See, there's a need that was present. That's why there's a problem. And you know what? I need to start speaking according to that need, not according to the problem. Come on, somebody. I need to start speaking and thinking according to the need, not according to the problem that's happening. That it may benefit them, not tear them down in my mind, not tear them down in my, in my thoughts. That's just going to produce, that's just going to shape my life in the wrong direction. It's going to benefit those who listen. When you encourage another person or give them the benefit of the doubt, there's two things that happen. One, they're going to become what you believe them to be. That's the power. Man, I'm telling you, you, you have creative power in your thoughts. People rise or decrease very often to the level of your expectation you put on them. So that's, that's one. They, 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 will, they will become what you believe them to be. And number two, you'll just, be, you'll just feel good about yourself when you start thinking encouraging thoughts about others. You're going to see the love of God grow inside of you. Man, the grace of God will just start to grow and overflow as you start thinking about others in an encouraging way. Second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, Love bears up under anything and everything that comes is ever ready, look at this, to believe the best of every person don't buy in the enemy look i'm telling you right now the enemy is lying to some of you today about another person that you're not believing the best about that person you're believing the worst and and it's a stronghold in your life it's straining of and affecting that relationship you are trapped by deception and by definition the bible says you're a fool you need to take that thing captive and bring it into the obedience of christ and start thinking encouraging thoughts that would benefit Yourself and even the others, man. Here's number three. Think grateful thoughts. Think grateful thoughts. Man, the power of a thankful heart, of gratitude, and what that just will change. That will change. I'm telling you, these, these thoughts, if you just start to discipline it, these will change your life. If you start thinking this way, if you just have a grateful heart, the person who's always grateful can never be let down. Never. The, the, the people that are, that, it only happens to those who complain and who are discontented in life. That's the only people who are let down, are those who complain and who are discontented in life. Colossians 3.15 says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to have peace. And then he says this, And be thankful. See, study after study show that gratitude has linked gratitude to happiness. Psychologists, sociologists, um, they, they've proven that the more grateful you are, the happier you are. And again, long before there was sociology and psychology, God's word was true. 
It is true, you guys. If you want to have healthy relationships, then you start with this right here, the attitude of gratitude. You're going to be far happier and enjoy your relationships more if you develop this habit of being grateful for the people in your life. It's not in your notes, but you may even write it down. Philippians 1.3. Paul says this about the people in his life. He's talking to the church there at Philippi. He says, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God, Philippians 1, 3. I, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. This simple truth is the foundation of good relationships, the thoughts you are thinking towards the people in your life. You see, when you think about the people in your life, what's the first thought that comes to mind? Is it gratitude? Are you thankful? So often when, when we think about the people in our lives, we don't, we're not great. We think about like, what do they need to do for me? So often we think about the people in our lives, we think about the problems we have with that person, the issues that are still left unresolved. What do we need to get done together? Maybe they're action-oriented, but, but Paul shows us a different way. His first thought for his friends were gratitude, and it's the model that we should follow if you want your relationships to last. Here's the challenge, though. The longer that you know someone, the more likely that it is for you to take that person for granted. Isn't that true? The longer you know someone, the easier it is to focus on that person's faults, to focus on the bad times, to focus on, the, on, on all those difficulties instead of focusing on, focusing on the good times. That's why it takes effort on your part to choose the attitude of gratitude, to have thoughts of gratitude toward the people in your lives. And then when we develop that, I mean, the habit of thinking uh, and thanking God, for people in our lives, I'm telling you, you're going to cultivate healthy relationships in your life. To be just that, just that think grateful thoughts. Here's the fourth thing that we need to think, and that is think powerful thoughts. Think powerful thoughts. Do you think of yourself as an average person? Are you just average? How many C, C students here with me? Come on, I'm a C student. Come on now. We just an average, or, or maybe you think of yourself as a victim. Are you just a victim to your circumstances, the victim to in, in life, or do you see yourself as a victor? Or do you see yourself as victorious, as more than a conqueror? Like the Bible says, First John chapter four says, "Greater is He that's in you than He that is in the world." Instead, we focus on why a miracle can't happen than why a miracle can happen, or we're we're explaining it away. For some of you, you were taught to be skeptical. It's what you were taught to be skeptical of the powerful instead of faithful to God like like and you need to retrain your thoughts take those things captive and bring it into the obedience of Christ and start thinking powerful thoughts and start thinking that God is that, that, that God can he's the God of the impossible that if God be for me who could be against me greater works that than, than I I will do than you do that there's nothing too difficult for God you need to start thinking powerful thoughts about your life Romans eight thirty seven says no in all these things and I know there's things going on in your life. He says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We have to retrain our thoughts to stop being so skeptical and start being powerful, to think powerful thoughts. One of our values here at Discovery is we dream big because we serve a big God. And I dare you to dream big. Your God is big. He's not afraid of your, uh, of, of your big dreams. He's actually, I believe God takes offense at your small dreams, though. If, I'm telling you, you want, to, you want to change your life with the right thinking? Start thinking powerful thoughts. Here's the last one I'll give you. Start thinking God thoughts. Think God thoughts. Man, where are your thoughts coming from, you know? Once you start thinking about your thoughts, you start taking every thought ca captive, you're going to notice where these thoughts are coming from. Some, some of them are coming from you. Some are from the enemy. Some are from this world. Some are from entertainment and all that junk that we're just consuming and consuming. Man, we need to learn how to think God. Well, where do you get God thoughts? Where do we get them? Can I tell you? The Word of God. The Word of God contains God's thoughts. So you meditate on God's Word. So we memorize God's Word. So we quote God's Word. So we read God's Word. Like get into a reading plan at the beginning of this year and get the Word of God. I'm telling you, at the right time, God will bring the Word of God back to remembrance. You won't know where it came from, but you'll just get a God thought like a lightning bolt will hit you like, where did that come from? But it was the answer you needed. It was the direction you needed because you put the thought in there and he brought it to remembrance in due season. Starts thinking God thoughts. Joshua 1.8 says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. See, I mean, you're not, you're not gonna, just going to do it just because you want to do it. You're gonna, he says you're going to do it because you put it in your mind. 
You're gonna, it'll, if you put the word of God in your mind, start meditating, meditating on it, it'll start shaping your life. Man, you'll start to do the things that are written. It'll just become part of your life, not like, oh, I have to do this, and I should do this, and man, why don't I do this? No, 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 no. You don't have action problems. You don't really have even habit problems. You have thought problems. That's, that's at the heart of it here. You're meditating on the wrong things. We're focused on the wrong things. Then, he says, you will be prosperous and successful. Man, then you're going to have the best year ever. Then 2018 is going to be a success if you fix your thoughts. Got to combat the lies with truth. Isaiah 26, 3. Here's the last verse I'll give you. He says this, that God, he says, you will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace. Look at this. Whose mind, whose mind is right. Both the inclinations and its character is stayed on you. I got my focus on you. My mind is on you because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. I believe Jesus wants to shift some things in our life today. That maybe there's been some, some thought patterns that have been developed. Maybe there's some lies that you've been just de fallen deception to that the Holy Spirit, or wasn't even, maybe even something I said, but the Holy Spirit brought revelation to you. There was a lie that you started to believe in, or maybe a fear that has immobilized you, that, God, that today God wants to set you free from and not have you be a part of your 2018. Maybe there's temptations in your life that, you have, that, that are just infiltrating, or maybe it's that, that, that negativity. I don't know where it is that God wants to bring shift. Maybe, it's not any, maybe the Holy Spirit gave you rhema today. And there's a shift, but there's a shift, I believe, that can happen today in Jesus' name. I believe today God wants a shift to happen. That one moment in his presence can change everything. How many of you believe that? Like he can change everything if you believe that with me. Can you stand to your feet? Come on, let's stand to our feet together. We're going we're gonna to get into God's presence, and we're going to invite him to change as we declare, look, you heard the word. You heard it now. Now it's time for your faith to be activated, church. Now it's time to declare some things. That chains are going to fall. Fear is going to bow. That Jesus is going to change everything right here, right now. In Jesus' name, as we begin to encounter. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Start putting your focus on God right now. Start shifting your mind right now to the right things. Come on, get your encounter. Get your breakthrough right here. We are so stoked about all God is doing in and through your life, and we would love to help you on your journey. To find out what your next steps are in your relationship with Christ, go to ilovediscovery.church forward slash next steps. At Discovery, it's our mission to teach people to love God passionately, love each other authentically, and change the world for the cause of Christ. And it's that mission that drives everything we do as a church. Join us next week for part three of the best year ever.